Welcome back to SAFC Live. Me and Danny just debating the game there and maybe where Sunderland could have maybe got something more from it. But in the end, probably a good point on the road. Yeah, I, th I think a fair result. Yeah, looking back at the, the game as a whole, really, I think they had spells in the first half. They had probably the best chance of the game in the second half. Uh, Hadji Wright, wasn't it, off the bench? Clean through one-on-one uh, -on -one with Anthony Patterson. A good save from Anthony to his left-hand side. Ourselves, just as you said there, when we come back live, we were discussing, did we have any real clear-cut opportunities? Not really, I think. Dan Neal's effort, probably the best half chance at best, isn't it? Strike keeper parries it. And I think it was Dennis Serkin on the follow up. So it was really open in the second half. I thought we said their midfield didn't seem like it existed really. It was like a team had picked the ball up, drive 30, 40 yards, lose possession. The other team had come back and a bit of a, like a bit of a slogging boxing match in a way, really, in the second half. But I think positive to take, you mentioned it there right at the end, clean sheet. You know, we've been after one, conceding the first goal in games today. Luke thought was excellent, Dan Ballard excellent as well, obviously your fullbacks at times defending um, and that's on the road as well against the good Coventry team so uh, that's the positives I take from it, obviously still more to do at the top end of the pitch, didn't work the goalkeeper enough, the lads will know that and obviously but then you know you're obviously looking at the squad and the depth at this moment in time. Yeah I think Coventry will probably be there or thereabouts at the end of the season take away the three teams that came down because yeah. they showed they can play some good football at times, they showed that they can you know try and carve open defenses as well and when they brought on the subs as well especially right probably coming up with the closest chance for them yeah. as well yeah i think so i think looking at you know they, they know their roles the shape well organized uh, wing backs you know sometimes i said it there on comms if you haven't got a lot of the ball you become a back five you're deep your, your wing backs are forced back you're pegged into your own half but we didn't have that much control on the game today i didn't feel as much as we usually do I haven't seen the the stats yet in terms of possession I'd say equal, it felt equal for me today there. Um, but yeah, so at times they had space and then you're losing a little bit with Jack then because he can't play as high as he can. He's having to help out Dennis come back. And as I said, it's those distances between full back and, and obviously your winger when, when the opposition are playing um, wing backs. Uh, so it's a bit of cat and mouse really out on the flanks. But at times we handled it well. De Silva had a little bit of space in that first half, didn't he? Uh, but second half, I thought we got to grips with it. Limited them to, to very few opportunities. Uh, God really didn't have much to go off, did he? either himself um, but yeah I mean we'll have to listen to what Tony Moby says later on but I think he'll perhaps see the games similar to ourselves I'd imagine where neither team may be quite done enough to win it yeah okay then let's have a look at the action then and see where Sunderland had their opportunities and Coventry and like you say Danny I think I think maybe Coventry shaded the first half but Sunderland's certainly shading the second half and like you say a point at the end of the day yeah, it's, it's, good. It's, it's getting into these areas of the pitch, that final third, it's where it's, where it's all about, isn't it? It's the, it's the money men at the top end of the pitch, the strikers, uh, you know, if you've got one or two quality strikers at this level, they're, they're the difference, aren't they? And see, obviously looking at Coventry, Jokeres last season, he's moved on, got a bag full of goals for them, he was a, he was a really good striker at this level. Um, and unfortunately for ourselves, we haven't got that at this moment in time. You know, Ross is in the treatment room still, he's not far away, hopefully. Uh, you're getting back out there and he'll get goals for us in this team you know obviously when Patrick's out there on the right hand side and Jack supply line for him uh, we're going to be um, we're going to be a match or more than a match for, for most teams at this level uh, but it's going to be hard to pick a man of the match but certainly in that first half Casey Palmer was very good wasn't he for Coventry yeah he was yeah if you're looking at, obviously from their point of view I'd say him he was involved in a lot around these areas you see their little threaded pass lovely weight on it that one there over the top for Godden just doesn't quite get it right, does he? Trying to cushion it for, for Ellis Sims there. Um, Abdullah Barr, disappointed in him today. Big opportunity, said it before the game. He'll have been frustrated with the, with the lack of game time he's had coming off the bench. But today, you've, we've seen it in, in the past. I think at times he doesn't know what he's going to do with the ball. And see it today there, if you step over, he's, he's often running into bodies or not quite doing enough. His decision making, final third, got to be better. Um, and then obviously he came off in that second half, didn't he, as well? But uh, yeah. Listen, in, in general, you could single people out. You know, Pierre had to be careful. He got booked early on. At times, he, he had a little bit of control on the game when there was some sort of midfield going on out there. Uh, Dan Neal as well, covering a lot of grass again, helping out defensively. I thought we were going to see another one of those uh, half-chance goals from uh, Coventry on that occasion. And yeah, that Godin one there, just trying yeah, to get on the end of it. One where yeah. it just finds its way into uh, God Godin's path there, isn't it? No, not, not a clean strike. I think it's off Luke yeah. O'Neill's chest. Falls to him there, but he can't get enough on it. Uh, that's possibly a foul there. Ref let a lot of those go. 
uh, you know, fans will say, don't mind that because you let the game flow a lot. Well, I think Keith uh, Stroud has previously, when he's been featured in our games, been, been accused of fussy. the opposite. Yeah, yeah, been fussy in games, hasn't he? Yeah, I remember there was one at Stadium Miller, like, was it last season or the season yeah. before? And it, sometimes it was about him, wasn't it? Whereas today, he did let it go. Listen, some of those probably are fouls, but as long as he's the same for both teams and he's letting the little niggly ones go, you don't mind it. Um, and it's, it was a little spell, wasn't it, in that first half where they were starting to put a few balls into the box, long throw-ins from Latibudia here now. Uh, we've got bodies back there, a few panicky moments, a few scrambles going on. Uh, that one there, Luke turns his back maybe off his elbow. Listen, no one's really appealing for it, but um, they, they got into this area quite a bit. I've said it about ourselves, and they, but they, to be fair, they, they had a lot more almost moments than us, those little threaded ones, didn't they? You see, 10, 15 yarders, just if one of those comes off and they're in, look, Palmer, it's just too far, too far in front of him, too much weight on but the But on every occasion, they'll him. get the body on the right side, won't yeah, they? Yeah, and again here, this one now. It's unfortunate for Sims, this, because he's always going wide, isn't he? And then he tries to shift it onto his right. And say Trey Hume's getting back at him. And uh, Anthony Patterson, he try, just tries to do him at his near post, I think, rather than open himself up and look to bend it into the far corner. Just tries to catch Anthony Patterson out, but he's not buying it. And he gets that right boot on it. Um, so, yeah, a lot of half chances in the game. We'll get onto their best effort and, and ours probably in the in the second half, wasn't it? This one, De Silva right at half time on the swinger up and over the top and that was that really in the first half wasn't it but second half I thought we started quite well didn't we first five minutes we were at it Jack was seeing a bit of the ball on this left hand side driving forward um, and this is the one isn't it into Dan Neal they don't really get out and press him strike through keep it makes a bit of a meal for it if I'm honest you know Dan's 30 30 odd five yards out isn't he really is that Sunderland's best uh, effort do you think probably yeah and that's so that's summing it up in a way we're, we're getting into these areas now aren't we Bradley Dak Trying to link up there, a little clever flick into Jack's path. Um, and the block there, Latibudia gets a boot on it, I think, and up and over the crossbar. So at this point, I think, right, we're knocking on the door, but we're having a little spell in the game now, and that's where you're looking for that golden opportunity, really, isn't it? Which didn't really come. Say that, you know, it's a half chance, isn't it, for Jack? A lot of bodies around. He's got four or five bodies to try and play through. And uh, deflected up and over the top. And this is Trey Humes, isn't it, into McFadzian. He was in the, the walls this in. afternoon, wasn't he? Had a few of them, didn't he, McFadzian? But he loves that side of the game, doesn't he? Similar to to Dan Ballard really, you know, puts his head in, gets the blocks in, that's what he gets paid for. Luke on the follow-up, strike but uh, up and over. Saw a couple of changes including uh, Wright and Ayari coming on in the, in the second half yeah. um, for Coventry City and they were involved as much as anyone, Palmer again, just before he went off. You made a comment Danny about the midfield feeling open towards the end of the game, do you think that was because Ekbar and Palmer both made way? Uh, no, it was probably before that, yeah, it was long before that, early on in the second half, it just felt like both teams were picking it up and there was like 30 yards for, for players to drive into, you know, usually you see championship games, it's quite compact and frantic through the middle of the pitch, but, you know, get the ball out wide, but today it was like they pick it up 20 yards from their own goal, driving into space, look at it, see it now, look at the big space you've got here, now if you know, after the ball gets his head up earlier, can he find Joe Bellingham, they're running back towards their own goal on the counter, Man comes across there, misreads it, doesn't he? There, can he? You say Latibudia does quite well. I think he knows Joe Bellingham's behind him, and he's got to try and cut that line of the pass off, and he does quite well in the end. But you know, could could have done a bar. Penalty shot for Sunderland on this occasion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think Dan's possibly looking for it a little bit. Does he fish a leg out? Does Dan go over it? It's I think there's an to arm. See. There's an arm, arm from well. McFadden in there. You've yeah. seen them given. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, again, from from the rest, you know, point of view, he only gets that one look at it, doesn't he? He doesn't feel there's enough in it. Um, again, the same McFadden involved in a lot there, wasn't he today? Back there, defended well at times. Just behind Dak, that one. In Coventry now, to break forward, a little give and go there. Isn't it? Yeah, drilled shot, isn't it? She drags it wider that post. And is this the one? Yeah. yeah, this is that save, isn't it? This is the one, isn't it? Yeah, golden chance for them. It's subs coming up with it. the move. What, yeah, what I would say, he lifts it, which helps Anthony out rather than on the floor. You know, if he fizzes that in that far corner, just opens himself up. Yari passing through to right. Net. Yeah, so that's their, that's their golden chance really in the game, isn't it? Good play there. To the sub, isn't it? Off the bench, just sets him lovely with the pass. And uh, Anthony Patterson produces the save. And then later on, yeah, there was a few moments for McFadden. and I said at times he defended well there. I think he does the right thing. Keeper comes, is in no man's land for me. He'll perhaps say he, he's asking for it, but I think there's a defender deal with it and argue about it later. And then this one on the break, <laughs> looked at first like he'd done Anthony Patterson, didn't it? And, obviously from the camera angle but it was well wide in the end and then uh, Jack yeah and that's McFadden in there can't sort his feet out but fortunately for him takes the pace off it and it's into Wilson's hands 
kept going as he always does, Jack Clark. Yeah, he does, Jack. Side. Yeah, he had a little spell where he was having a breather, but I think that was down to the fact that probably a quite a warm day down there at Coventry, and he was asking to do, he was asked, sorry, to do a lot of defensive work, help out with uh, Van Uyck on that far side, just in between him and him and Dennis. McFadden so involved again here, Danny. Yeah, He's probably going to get a man of the match, yeah. wouldn't he, McFadden? And then Jack late on again, coming across, maybe just roll it across there. Look, Job, free. Can he just square it for him? Get the shot away. There's the one for Ballard, isn't it? He comes up. into the goalkeeper. Challenges again here. And then he's in there again. Just takes everyone out, doesn't he? So, yeah, I think you can see from the highlights there, both teams having a good go. I don't think it's one of them where we and, and either team settled for a nil-nil. You know, we wanted to try and get forward and try and create a few problems for them and similar for them. Uh, but at the end of the day, it wasn't to be for either team. So, I think Mark Robbins will be disappointed. Do you so, think they'll be more disappointed? Yeah, than probably, them? yeah. Um, you know, you look at their, their options at the top end of the pitch, you know, Sims up there, uh, Gordon, he had a good chance really, didn't he, in the first half, didn't get enough on it. Sims had that one in the first half and then right off the bench. So they've probably had the better chances, I'd say, slightly. Um, and then Tony Moby, I think he'll be happy with the points, to be honest. Let's have a look around then at the other scores in the EFL Championship this afternoon. The goals are flying in. Uh, last night it was Hull City 1, Bristol City 1, Rotherham 1, Leicester City 2, Huddersfield Town 0, Norwich City 4, West Brom 4, Middlesbrough 2, so Middlesbrough's poor start of the season continues, Ipswich Town have been defeated for the first time by Leeds United by 4 goals to 2, Birmingham 2, Plymouth Argyle 1, Millwall 1, Stoke City 0, Cardiff City had a very late penalty to win at home against Sheffield Wednesday by two goals to one. Southampton, Sunderland's next opponent. They also won 2-1 at home to Queen's Park Rangers. And Preston with likewise at home to Swansea City. Let's have a look at the first of your thoughts here on hashtag AskDanny from Graham. It says, from Vegas, do you think more experienced players are needed to help the lads improve? Thanks, Graham, and thanks for tuning in from Vegas. The first one, it is about signings. Yeah, yeah I thought it might There's be. It's only another week uh, of this. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, in terms of experience, does he, is he looking at age maybe or in terms of how many games they played maybe at this level? Uh, and I think, I've said it before, experience doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go and get someone who's 35, who's been at 15 clubs, um, who can do a job type of thing. You can get someone in who's 25, maybe 24, 25, who's played 50 to 100 games at this level, knows the league quite well, uh, and just give the lads a little bit more help in there. I think that's what he's getting at, I think, and, and probably yes. In what role um, do you think would that be more beneficial for the club, in the kind of Corey Evans role? Yeah, I, th I think so at this moment in time. You know, Pierre's been playing there. You know, he got booked early on today, and he's got to be careful when, when he's that defensive midfielder. He made a few challenges after that, where you're always then for 80-odd minutes, he's on that yellow card, and you're looking, just in case he missed times, one, then we're down to 10 men for the, the remainder of the game. Um, but thankfully, he never. Obviously, Tony took him off later on. Um, but yeah, while Corey's out of the team, your, your midfielders at this moment in time are, are Dan Neal, Pierre Equart and Joe Bellingham, who's obviously playing higher at this moment in time, but young lads really at this level. Um, so some, some experience in there for me. We, you know, we've, we've said this for a while now, maybe if, if Corey's going to be out for a while, have a look, can we get somebody in there, you know, could be 24, 25, who, who does that role really well. Um, I, I'd go to you know, look at Morsi, who does it well for Ipswich. Um, well, he might not have done it too well today. They conceded four at, uh, <laughs> at home to uh, Leeds. But in general, you know, that, that one who puts the fires out just controls the game, gets across when, when the full-backs are pushing on. If Dennis is forward, he ships across, sits in there. Um, somebody like that, really, just in the squad. Um, and then, obviously, you're looking at top end of the pitch as well, really. I think, yeah. you know, you're looking at there. We've started with Job up the top, who's 17. I'm sure there will be a question about it. Yeah, and then you... Well, let's say he, dropped, he didn't really drop uh, deeper as such. Obviously, Bradley went off there. And then you bring in Alex Pritchard on, who's not, not an out-and-out -out striker. He doesn't want to go and play up there. Hemi is coming off the bench, who's 19, I think 20 now, isn't he, Hemi? Uh, but still a young lad. And he looked a little bit off the pace there when he came on. Sometimes it's hard coming off the bench as a substitution. You know, when the game's as open as what it was there, um, you get your second win, you're blown a little bit. Uh, and it looked like he, it caught up with him a little bit. There was a couple of balls went into him. He looked like a bit leggy, so he needs to get up to speed fast. Um, Do you think Bradley Dax getting up to speed in the well, yeah, appearances we've 70, seen? 70 70 odd minutes again yep. today, didn't he? Uh, showed one or two neat touches at times as well. But he's he's a bit of a drifter. Do you know what I mean? I think when he he gets frustrated, if say you're playing him as the ten, 
uh, if he doesn't see the ball for a few minutes, he wants to drift out wide. We've seen it at Preston. He was drifting to the right back spot. Yep. You mentioned it in the comms there. He drifted out to maybe the left hand side to, to get on the ball. And it's all well and good that if he's doing that, but we need runners you know, to go beyond the times they've got a back three there and they're looking, they're having a bit of a jolly up or no one to mark here really. Joe tried it a couple of times and it was actually Bradley that dropped a couple of balls over the top that he almost close, got on the end yeah. of, yeah. But at this moment in time, you know, you're, what will be three games into the season really or four games into the season, you don't want to have to have too many makeshift players having to, oh, he'll do a job for us for now. That's where we need to get proper players in proper positions uh, who can do the job, what, what they're asked of really and what they've been brought up doing. Let's have a look at another thought here on hashtag Ask Danny. Uh, Cue balls being in touch and said, good point today from a team that's going to be right up there at the end of the season. We need to get to the end of the transfer window and get a couple of new faces in and kick on. Good clean sheet today. I think that's the main positive Tony Mowbray yeah. will take from this afternoon. Coventry City will be there and thereabouts. You know, they got so close to the Premier League last season, Danny. And, you know, a point away from home and a clean sheet you know you put it in the bag and move on don't you as Tony Mowbray yeah. would say I mean yeah he's, he's saying that you know it's hard to say it's early doors will Coventry be up there they had a good season but look at Middlesbrough they've had a, a shocking start to be honest haven't they um, but yeah he's saying they're positive to take rightly so yeah clean sheet you know we've gone behind in every game so far this season there's obviously been talk about Danny Bart coming back in and you know can he come back into the team but the lads who are out there Luke 09 I say obviously you mainly talk about your centre backs Dan Ballard Luke 09 generally as a, as a unit today done really well Anthony Patterson behind him, obviously Trey and, and Dennis at times had to chip in and defend as well. And you're going to have to, you know, you're on the road coming up against the team who have got, you know, decent strikers at this level. Um, and they handled them quite well throughout the afternoon. Um, he's on about, uh, I think he's mentioned a bit more experience there. Yes, it's, it's obviously going to be a talking point. And what was it, five or six days or so to go before the window closes? Yeah. And I'm sure Chris, and Friday, Christian and yeah. the rest of the staff or the, you know, the directors and the recruitment team are, are going to be working now looking at getting one or two in before before the window closes okay let's move on to another thought then here on hashtag ask danny the next one comes in from rich who says danny have you ever given a dog cpr at the beach well let's give some context to this because there was reports during the week of luke nine saving an elderly labrador uh, on the beach in sunderland and he saw it was in distress and um, saved its life have you ever saved a dog's life danny uh, I haven't, no, no, I'll give dog props, ice cream at the beach, but not a uh, <laughs> chip maybe on the, on the Roker seafront there, but not CPR, no, but yeah, credit to Luke if that's what's gone on, uh, obviously I've seen it yesterday, yeah, um, so he's probably out for a, a leisurely walk, isn't he, and then he's called into action, uh, you know, on, on his day off, so, uh, you know, fair play to, to Luke, and uh, hopefully the dog's okay, uh, so, <laughs> well, get him on, saving dogs on a, during the week and clean sheets at the weekend. Very good indeed, any more thoughts? That's it for us for today. We will be back now. This is going to be very early next week. Um, probably feel more sorry for those Southampton supporters who are going to have to make the trip up because it's a 12.30 kickoff at the Stadium of Light against Southampton, which means we will be on air at the new time, 45 minutes before kickoff. So 11.45 we will be on air. And I do understand, uh, I guess, if we're going on today, we'll be on air on Sunderland's official YouTube channel. So do keep an eye out for that. Danny, thanks for your company this afternoon. Sunderland have got their first clean sheet of the season away at Coventry. We'll see you soon.